Seven Lamb Productions presents... What's going on, Jim? There was no time to tell her. Carter was crossing the street. Once again, I'd find myself in quite the predicament. Angie, you need to go. Go where? Are you in trouble? Mr. Luck, fancy seeing you here. What is this? Just a dame on the street. I said beat it, sister. Beat it? Yeah, take a hike, scram, depart, skedaddle, vamoose. Hey, that's one of Vendel's favorite words. I don't know what's going on here. Listen, lady, you better go. There's nothing for you here. I don't have time for a quarrel. A quarrel? I think it's a type of bird. What? No. Lady, just get lost. Do it. (sighs) Now, Mr. Locke, I'm going to need you to head towards that green building. Why, of course. Yes, he took the bait. Everything was falling right in order. The green building was fixed with mics and cameras set up by my buddy Paul and his partner Arthur. I would head into the abandoned building and wait for them to get what they needed to take both Vendel and Carter out of the picture. I looked over at the UPS truck across the street. That's where they both were stationed, along with several experts in the field of tapping. Sure. What is it, King Arthur? You sure Locke is going to be all right? Jimmy Joe? Of course he is. He's got guts. And he's been in worse trouble than this. One time in the force, we busted these two coke dealers. One of them pulled a knife on me. Made like he was going to stab me. You know what Jimmy Joe did? Run away? After that. Cry? After that. Hide for a long, long time? (sighs) After that. I don't know. What? He called me when I was in the hospital, apologized for not helping me. I had gotten stabbed that night and was rushed to the ER. Anyway, the guy's got guts. I don't know if that really counts, but all right. Is everything in place? Everything ready? They're walking around the back of the building now. Oh, we're ready. I told everybody it's going to go down exactly like Scarface. Good. Although, I think it'd be a better sting if we had actual bees. It doesn't go down like that. Plus, it's too hard to work with bees. They're loud finicky and sometimes the honey sucks fine fine we'll do it this way shh they've reached the door go ahead to the side door we walked into the storage room filled with empty shelves and crates Vendel stood in the far corner in front of a cracked frosted window well Mr. Locke We told you we did not want to see you again. You have survived all of our torture devices, but now it is time to end you. I have a gun with a bullet with your name on it. Really, I wrote your name on the bullet, see? You bastard. So you're going to kill me? That's right. Because you don't want me helping Terrence O'Reilly. Duh. And you have already tortured me. What's this? You bump your head? Why are we recap? I just wanted to get it all straight. And all on tape. Tape? What tape? What is this tape you speak of? Do you hear that? That's the sound of our men coming to get you and Carter. You have conned us? It's more like a sting. Bees? You have brought bees? It's not that kind of sting. Where are the bees? They're probably in his pockets. That's where I always keep bees. No, there are no bees. At that moment, Wendell raised his gun, pointed it right at my forehead. Who is it? Who is outside? It's the police. The band is out there? That's the kind of sting? So lonely? King of Pain? Messaging bottle? Roxanne! I was always keen to every breath you take. No, it's a real sting and that's the real police. So just give it up, Vendel. It's too late for you. 
Yeah, shit. Hey, uh, Jimmy Jong, the door's locked. Jimmy Jong, if you're still alive, can you open the door? Oh, and uh, tell those two bad guys that they're under arrest. Uh, <laughs> so, Vendel, it looks like you and Carter are uh, under arrest. <laughs> Also, is it too late for us, Mr. Locke? Looks like it is too late for you. Does Vidania. Drop it. Drop the gun. Out of a small dark hallway strode Angela with a small handgun pointing at Vendel's back. Carter instantly shot his hands up, dropping his gun to the floor. That man listens. You should, too. Who are you? Uh, do as she says, Vendel. Thank you for cooperating. Hey, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on in there, but can someone get the door? I got it. Thanks, Jimmy John. Hey, Big Jimbo. You doing all right? Really? You guys couldn't get through a locked door? You didn't plan for that? Hey, hey, hey. Who's this cutie? This is Angela Diamond. She saved me. I would like her to save me, too. Save me a piece of that ass. Paul. The bad guys? Right. Vendu, you are under arrest. And Carter, you are... gone? Where'd he go? He must have headed down the hall to the back door. That's how I got in. Shit! I didn't know there was a back door. Really? Okay, Arthur, you and Angela stay here. Make sure Vendu doesn't go anywhere. Oh. All right. Jimmy Jong, you're with me. Paul and I rushed down the hallway through the back door and out onto Urban Street. That's when I saw Carter. There he is. He's heading into the park. Oh, shit. I hate parks. What? Why? Because parks is an anagram for spark. And I had a traumatic experience with electricity when I was young. Well, it's only one park. Singular. Oh, yeah. And park isn't an anagram for anything. Except carp. Shit, I hate fish. But wait, isn't carp spelled with a C? Let's get him. We ran into the park, past the seesaw, the water fountain, and the lake. We weren't getting any closer. Carter was fast. I would say he was a marathon runner if I wasn't so slow. He was about to exit the park when he randomly hit something hanging from a tree toppling to the ground. What the hell did he hit? I have no idea. He's out cold. Oh my god. He hit a beehive. Wow, what are the odds of that? Pretty good, since it, uh, happened. Well, he tried running away from the sting and ended up with another. <laughs> because of the bees, I get it. Now let's pick this bastard up and take him in. Be careful, don't let any of the honey get on you. It sucks. Don't you mean be careful? What? It's a pun. That was a bit of a stretch, Jimmy Jong. Let's just go. Right. We knocked the beehive off of Carter and then carried his limp body back to the UPS truck. Paul called it in and the police cars arrived soon after. Paul told me he was going to take them in for questioning and that he would inform me of everything he could get out of them. Angela hung around the whole time so I thought it only proper to walk a dame home. I want to thank you. If it wasn't for you, I may not be here. Probably not. He would have shot you in the face. And you can't live without a face. Tell that to my Uncle Harry. He was born without a face. He had to eat with his butt. Weird thing is, he also had to smell, hear, and see through his butt as well. That doesn't make any sense. Well, he was built like an ox. And that doesn't make it any clearer. Anyway, thank you for everything. I didn't know you owned a gun. Weren't you the one who told me this area was unsafe? Was that me? Yes. Oh, but I didn't take you for that kind of broad. I have a lot of secrets, Jim. It was something about her. I don't know if it was her flowing blonde hair, the way she walked, or the way she talked, but there was something about her that just gave me the biggest erection. Normally I'd be fine, but today I wore my thin pants. I needed to head out before she noticed. Luckily we arrived at her house just in time. All right. Well, thank you again. I guess I should head back to the office now. Actually, would you care to come in? What about your husband? 
Well, he would care if you came in. No, I meant, do you think that would be wise? It would just be a cup of coffee. Damn it. I was hoping it was going to be sex, but oh well. I could go for a coffee too, so I accepted her offer. The condo was extravagant, bigger than I'd expected. But she did live on Atlas Avenue, so it made sense. Atlas Avenue was for the rich and the rich at heart. The living room was larger than my entire apartment. Hardwood floors, long flowing drapes, custom bar, chandelier. This place screamed money. Please, have a seat. How do you take your coffee? Uh, black, but uh, with two sugar cubes and a bit of cream. All right. I had been walking hunched over the whole way up the stairs trying to hide the tent I'd pitched. I quickly sat down in the love seat and crossed my legs. Did she notice? I hope not. Angela walked into the kitchen. I couldn't tell if she was flirting with me. She came back out of the kitchen with two coffee mugs. Jim, I'm all wet. Flirting. Definitely flirting. Is that so? Yes. I spilled some coffee on my blouse. Oh. Here you go. Thank you. Hmm. Perfect. Maybe she wasn't flirting. But then she sat right next to me, her leg touching mine. There was a whole other couch, but she chose to sit next to me. Jim, have you ever seen Top Gun? Yes. What about nine and a half weeks? Ha! I knew what she was getting at. Top Gun, nine and a half weeks. Those movies had hot, steamy lovemaking. Yes, I've seen both of them. I have to say my favorite scenes are... Do you think that Mickey Rourke and Tom Cruise look alike? What? No, uh, not at all. Tom Cruise is short and his face is mostly teeth. And Mickey Rourke looks like he made out with an exhaust pipe. See, that's what I told my friend. Minus the exhaust pipe bit. She thinks that they look similar. Well, that did it. She definitely wasn't coming on to me. Boner receded. Nothing but a flaccid little... I mean, average-sized wiener now. Very well. I shouldn't get involved anyway. Jim? Yes? Let's have hot, wild, back-breaking sex right now. Well, there's no misreading that. I decided to play it cool. Uh, what? Really? Uh, that's nice. Yeah, now? now? You, you mean right now? You, you want to do it right now? Shit, that wasn't cool. What the fuck was wrong with me? I've had sex before. Don't you remember the days of our senior year? I collected myself. Yes, yeah, seeing you again brought fond memories of those days. Then let's do it. We can't. Why? I made it a rule not to sleep with clients. It complicates things. Well, that's very bold of you. I don't want you to have sex with me in an effort to get back at your husband. And what if someone sees me leaving the building all disheveled? Plus, I don't have a condom. Well, what if I were to say I don't want you to be my PI for the day? And I'm not doing it to get back at my husband. Also, there's a back door that you could leave through. And I have plenty of condoms. Well, then we can have sex. What was I doing? She was a married woman and a client. I always told myself to stay out of the situations like this. Ugh, maybe I should stop. We'd already moved to her bed and were undressing. That's it, I had to stop it. But then I saw her completely nude. The sun seeping in through the curtains gave her a glorious golden glow. Screw it. Let's do it. Oh, oh yeah. There we oh. go. Touch it with your ankles. Oh. Don't you fucking look at me. All right. Oh, my God. Oh. You want to touch my dingus, baby? Oh. It's right there. You're looking right at it. Can't miss it. Oh, yeah. Get around it out with the five-point palm exploding vagina technique. Oh. There it is. Oh. Oh. Right. oh. All right. Now bite me. Oh. No, don't. Don't bite me. Never mind. Forget I said that. You bite me. Oh, no, I don't want to. That's disgusting. Right there. Oh. Right there. there it is. Bite me right there. Gonna finish it off with the frothy chicken. Oh, oh, okay. oh. All right. Oh. The fun lasted for nearly two hours. I didn't know I still had it in me. It had been a while since I'd been intimate with some dame. Oh, that was fun. Where did you learn those moves? I bought a book when I was in Thailand. When I visited Thailand several years ago, I'd bought a book entitled Sex. You put yours right there. It had all kinds of spectacular sex moves. The roundabout, the upside-down mantis, the soup bowl, and my favorite, the frothy chicken. Well, that was one wild ride. Angela curled up into my arms and we laid there resting. 
I was about to fall asleep when I heard a door open. Honey, it's your husband, and I'm home early today. Oh, shit. Atlas Avenue Beat, written by Robert M. Lamb, edited by Dylan Whitehead, starring Jack Austin as Locke, Amy LeRae as Edith, Jose Caraballo as Paul, Brian Messick as Arthur, Shannon McCarthy as Lorraine, Megan Austin as Angela, co-starring Hope Ennis, Amber Simpson, Shannon Lee, Mike Butler, Ashley Wilkins, Matthew Manning, and Robert M. Lamb. Music provided by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to rate and review on iTunes. This has been a Seven Lamb production.